Hey everyone, I'm Katlaro and welcome back to my channel. Hello, hello, hello. So today we are back and we're going to talk about the Ultimatum South Africa. Yeah, we're going to talk about the Ultimatum South Africa. But before we get into today's video, do make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Just go ahead, subscribe, click on the like button and shoot me a little comment right before the video starts, okay? Okay, so this season of The Ultimatum South Africa has six couples and I will be discussing them from least messiest to most messiest, okay? Because honestly, the show just kept on getting messier and messier and I loved it. <laughs> so let's jump straight into it and start with Courtney and Aiden. I feel like they were the least messiest. They've been together for seven years, if I'm not mistaken. And honestly, they really didn't bring much to the show. I feel like Courtney had a really shining moment when she sat down in Katoko and was like, Bruh, you need to leave this girl. You cannot stay with this girl. Leave this girl. You know, I think she had a really shining moment for me there. But other than that, they really didn't matter to the show. No shade or anything like that. Um, I don't mean anything funny by it. What I do mean is that they didn't really have much going on. And I feel like it's mostly because they chose people that they didn't have the strongest connections with. If you guys notice, Corny had a stronger connection with... Was it in Gateko? Yeah, I think in Gateko... And she just happened to choose Genesis. Aiden also had a stronger connection. Well, in my opinion, that is. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought Aiden had a stronger connection with Tavi. But he chose um, Lebu. Which I'm not really mad about. Because I feel like it was kind of a gentleman moment for him. Because we didn't want Lebu to be rejected twice in a row. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it, Aiden. I get it, right? But at the same time, um, yeah, they didn't really have good relationships with the people they chose. And ultimately, I feel like it's because they rather went with the safe option rather than the option that would really challenge them and maybe, you know, spark some flames, you know? Another thing about um, Courtney and Aiden is that I feel like they came on the show to get engaged. But as you heard from the conversations that he had with Courtney's parents, he is unemployed, you know? And um, I don't know if the show pays people, you know? But it was kind of giving like they're here for a ring. Which I'm not really mad at, you know, go ahead, do your thing. They are a lovely couple and they really don't have much mess. Except the fact that Aiden doesn't have a job. Which I feel like makes it even more valid that they cannot get married now. I feel like Kutni Wafosa, I feel like Kutni Wafosa Wahesha, um, it's not the right time. If Aiden does not have a clear path in life, in terms of career, what he'd like to do... I don't think that they should be getting married. That's my opinion. Okay, that's just my opinion. It's not law. So don't be in the comments. <laughs> don't tell us what to do. Go ahead. If you want to marry an unemployed person, go ahead. I will not beat you. But yeah, personally, I feel like um, I understand where Aiden is coming from when it comes to not being ready. Because honestly, guys, he's not ready. He he Financially, he's not ready. And as much as finances don't really matter on the grand scheme of things, they actually do matter on the grand scheme of things. Because that's really going to dictate how soon you get married and how big your wedding is and how lavish your life is. I'm not saying you need all those kinds of stuff, right? But I'm just saying money determines a lot, okay? And I feel like you need money to start a life for someone. So, yeah, um, you don't have to be a millionaire. But you, you do need some type of income. As someone who's been in a relationship for a really long time, you start to realize that the path to marriage for different couples look different, you know? And if you're in a long-term relationship, there is a lot of things you work on before you get to the marriage. Some people enter the marriage and then work on the things. 
other couples work on the things first then enter into the marriage right and you know there's no there's no uh, guarantee of which method works okay and honestly i don't know which way is better i can't say that there is a method because i feel like everyone <laughs> who enters into a marriage is at the risk of a divorce it happens you know it happens not always for vile reasons like betrayals and you know abuse and things like that sometimes you just grow apart but anyway back to tabby and genesis okay cool so tabby um hmm, i kind of hear what she's saying but at the same time i feel like there are other issues they need to sort out when she was talking to the girls and i think courtney mentioned that when she came home he had made some burgers and tabby was like oh he did and though it kind of made a comment about how it doesn't happen often or something like that and i that that is a big issue that is a big issue i don't know if you guys have ever lived with your partner but division of chores division of labor is a big issue it's a big issue and if can you imagine how worse it's gonna get when you guys add kids you know and all the extra chores that comes with kids so you know um that's another issue they should probably work on and i feel like genesis is a little bit i feel like genesis takes tubby for granted hey because i think sometimes that happens in long-term relationships you know you can get a little comfortable you know that's my man that's my girl you know we locked in nothing is happening but you know um it's it's the you need to continue to date each other you need to continue to date each other and i think that's why tabby fell so in love if i can say that with lindy uh lindy Le. you know i feel like genesis got a little bit comfortable you know and he was happy to be out here in these streets you know what i'm saying and unfortunately he picked courtney i mean and unfortunately he was coupled up with courtney and courtney i don't really think was attracted to genesis i think she went for the safe option with genesis you know and i think genesis thought that you know i'm gonna have a good time i don't know if you guys know that movie hall pass where a bunch of married men are just like oh i hate my marriage i hate my marriage oh the streets are so much better and the wives were like, oh, are they? Go test it out. Let's see for a week. Go out in the streets and see. And none of them got laid. <laughs> none of them got laid. Like, it's not even, I don't think, I think sometimes people forget that it's a two-way street. You know, Be, being out in the streets is a two-way street. You know, it doesn't matter how much you want to be out in the streets. If people in the streets are not feeling you, you're not gonna get any action. I don't think Lindy Lay and Caesar are a messy couple per se. I do, however, question the six month. Like, why is it so urgent? And why is it so urgent that you need to be on TV? You tell me. You tell me what you think. You tell me what you think. I heard on the streets. That people are saying that, you know, he's, he's, he may be using it <laughs> as an addition. And by the streets, I mean my boyfriend. My boyfriend felt like <laughs> he was crying a lot. And he was just showing uh, producers that he can cry on cue. <laughs> I really don't get why they're on the show. It's been six months. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Tanya could not take caesar if we're just being honest she could not take caesar she was so jealous of caesar's beauty and you can't convince me otherwise okay and i think um Ngadeko and caesar was so cute so cute so cute but anyway child i'm happy for them they ended up um what do you call this getting engaged i'm happy for them but i i i do i do ask myself what's the rush in delay hmm? but it's 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 fine you know they clearly do love each other a lot and i guess i think they got a happy ending i really think they do i think they got a happy ending and i think if they continue to work on themselves they will live happily ever after but i also need lindy to take out his gold tooth okay 
Let's 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 take out the gold tooth. But I'm also hopeful that he took it out because my girl told me that he was on live the other day and he didn't have a gold tooth. So I think it's out. I think it's safe to say that the gold tooth is out. Along with the gold tooth, Lindy Lemma Man, the white skinny jeans. Let's just throw it away along with the gold tooth, okay? The white skinny jeans have got to go. You are too muscular. They are too tight. And I need you to take out the white skinny jeans and to put in vests in your life, okay? That polo neck on your dry muscles, child. It was, it was something. It was something. It needed a vest. It needed a vest. Okay. But anyway, other than that, I think he. I think. I think Lindy Le is a good guy. I think he is. I don't know him personally, but from what we saw on TV, he seemed somewhat perfect. So I know there's something he got going on. Okay, because nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Okay. But anyway. Let's move on to the next couple. The next couple have been together for two years, Ruth and Isaac. Um, what can I say about Ruth and Isaac? Where should I start? I think I should start at episode one where Ruth was in tears. She was in distress. She was shook, panicking. Okay, she was scared, crying. <laughs> Mamina and everything on national TV and literally an episode later <laughs> Episode later she is having uh, With another man <laughs> Not once not twice not thrice Ruth my girl Ruth my girl Ruth my girl. I don't honestly. I don't judge How Ruth moved in the ultimatum? Um, I think she, I, as much as the audience knew, I think a part of her knew that Isaac is not her man. Isaac is not her man. Two years without meeting the family is insane. Having a scheduled time you cannot, or having a cut of time that you can call your man at is fucking crazy. That's insane. What is he married? Oh my god, that's crazy. That's crazy. I don't know. I don't know if he's married. I don't know if he has a second family. I don't I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is whatever situation they have going is not the kind of situation that will give Ruth a happy marriage. It's not. It's not as undignified as she looked having sex multiple times with Nola, yuck. <laughs> On TV, um, you know, that it, it is what it is. It is what it is. And I respect that she didn't apologize. You know, I am here for women's rights and women's wrongs. I respect that she didn't apologize, to be honest, because I feel like Isaac would have done the same thing if Kanya wasn't such a crazy lady. He would have done the exact same thing. Isaac was already saying, oh, I see a future with her. And what did Kanye do except put on a dress for a date? What did Kanye do for Isaac to be telling his family that, oh, I see, you know, I may see a future. What the hell did Kanye do? What? What? I understand that, you know, as part of the show, you have to meet each other's families and parents and friends and da 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 da. But what the hell made Isaac say? That a woman he's known for two, three days, maybe a week at the most, he can possibly see a future with her. Whereas he has a girl he's been dating for two years that he hasn't even mentioned to his siblings. Our oh, Isaac. Let's be honest. Let's be honest, Isaac. You thought you were gonna get with a bad bitch. Okay? And what you got was a headache. <laughs> You thought, you thought it was going to be a good time. And what you got was a headache. What you got was a damn headache. And unfortunately, things happened better for Ruth. You know, she was able to actually get some. You know, she, she got along with her partner. He wasn't that much of a headache until he was. Isaac, Isaac, Isaac. Isaac, you know what Isaac reminds me of? Isaac reminds me of. Isaac reminds me of that movie Just Right. 
where Common has a little connection with Queen Latifah and then he meets uh, Paula Patton and literally drops Queen Latifah for Paula Patton and that's literally what happens what, what in my opinion <laughs> that's literally what happens what I've seen happen or I've experienced happen quite a few times um, men are really comfortable with jumping over a Queen Latifah for Apollo Patton and I'm not saying that Ruth is ugly she is beautiful she is beautiful she has crazy brows but she's beautiful she's a beautiful girl at the same time Kanya is conventionally attractive and I find that sometimes most times <laughs> guys are really willing to let go of a queen latifah and by queen latifah i mean someone who may be not as conventionally as attractive as someone else um also also someone who they have a connection with someone who they actually have things in common with someone who they actually like you know they are willing to let that go for the hot girl and um you know i can't really tell people what to do but i do think that sometimes people tend to make decisions from a very shallow place and i think we all saw how nola had i mean how isaac had a better connection with lebu but for some reason he went with kanya and unfortunately kanya was not what he wanted at all which was really fucking hilarious because when he was having conversations with lebu lebu was exactly what isaac wanted exactly what isaac wanted and i don't remember what the reality show was right What's the one in the pods? Is it Love is Blind? Is it Love is Blind? I don't, I don't know. It was last year though. It was sometime last year. I think it's Love is Blind. And what happened is that this guy was dating or seeing two different girls. And he mentioned to both girls that it was going to be his birthday um, in a couple of days, right? And the one girl took that mental note and on his birthday made him cupcakes. The other girl did not take a mental note and forgot and had to be reminded but somehow he still went for the girl that had to be reminded it actually it's it's such a weird thing to me it's so weird you sh you, you literally let go of the person who has shown genuine interest in and someone who can be a compatible partner for you just for someone else for very shallow reasons and he, and i know shallow i know it's shallow because can you tell me what isaac and kanya had or what kanya had done for isaac for isaac to tell his family that this is someone that i could see a future with what did kanya do because according to isaac kanya doesn't even wash dishes what, what exactly did kanya do anyway <laughs> i hate to say this or do i <laughs> I hate to say this, but I think Isaac got the experience he deserved. Um, yeah, that's all I can say about Isaac. <laughs> Cautionary tale. <laughs> Don't move like that, guys. Don't pass up genuine connections for shallow reasons, you know. Attraction is important, yes. Attraction is very important, yes. It's... It's paramount <laughs> you know it's very important but don't let your shallow desires outweigh your actual actual needs you know what I'm saying what you actually need to build a happy life for someone I also think Ruth got the experience she deserved um, I don't I'm not surprised they ended up together I do think that I do think that Ruth sleeping with Nola so many times showed that she didn't really care for her relationship that much at that point. And I think uh, for me, at least watching, it was evident that at that point she didn't really care, you know, um, for it to happen that many times. You know what I'm saying? Like I could get on a wild night, you guys had a nice date, you're, you know, drunk 
whatever whatever you know but not once not twice not thrice girl girl are you trying to go back to your man or not <laughs> ah anyway uh, i think she got the experience she deserved um i don't think she was gonna end up with nola anyway um, i don't think that would have been for the best anyway but i do love a girl who burns everything down on her way out <laughs> i did enjoy it i'm not gonna lie i did enjoy seeing a little bit of her villain side you know when she was just like i'm not gonna apologize because it wasn't a mistake i was like damn damn girl you meant that shit huh she's like yeah I meant it <laughs> at the time when she was going back and forth with Kanya I feel like you know what my baby girl Ruth baby I feel like you are one of the only people on the cast who was able to stand up to Kanya and I feel like it was about time it was well deserved so shout out to you you know uh, Cheating is wrong, girl. Cheating is wrong. But I guess you were separated for your man for three weeks. I, does it even count? Is it even cheating? I don't know. I mean, like, you see, that's how much I want to stand up for you because you put Kanye in place. That's how much I started liking you after that conversation with Kanye. I'll give you a tense, girl. But anyway, let's go to the next couple. Nola and Lebo, they have been together for one and a half years. And... I, 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 <laughs> I don't want to push an agenda, but do you see how the ones who've been together for shorter periods are so messy? Do you see? Don't jump me. Don't jump me. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. But they've been together for one and a half years. And um, from the beginning, you know, it just, it just does not look good when... A couple talks about relationship issues and the guy refers to the lady as being insecure. It could be true, but it could also mean that there is reason the lady is insecure. You know, like there are things that have happened uh, that have made her insecure, right? So, I wasn't sure, but at the same time, I feel like Lebo is such a sweet girl that... She didn't deserve any of what happened, you know? I think I think she was doing a little bit too much. She was doing a little bit too much when she went spying. <laughs> I don't know whose great idea it was to keep them so close to each other that someone else can spy because, you know what? You know what? Now when I think about it, I really understand level because if I was her, I'd be spying to you. I'm a C. So you're telling me that my man coupled up with another girl and I know and I'm two units away oh I wanna see <laughs> I wanna see what's going on I wanna see what's going on you know what I share I just feel so bad for level I feel so bad for level she seems like a very genuine girl and Nola is just not her man. Nola is not her man at all. Oh my gosh. Like, you know when the guys were even commenting on how disingenuous he seems. Like, it's, it's like he's lying or he's pretending or he's acting or, you know. <sighs> Nola is not your man, girl. It's not your man. Like, yo. Oh my god. I am hoping that at the reunion they are not together. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that they're not together because Nola is not your man. The way he went from crying in one scene to having sex with someone else in another scene. Like, literally, like, oh my gosh, no, no ways. And on top of that, he's a liar. Oh my god, he is such a liar. <laughs> And honestly, I don't, I don't understand people who get on reality TV and lie, especially if their actions are documented, you know, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, like, we can see you. We can see you. We can also see you lie. 
you do like I don't I don't get it I don't get it I don't get it he's just he's yeah yeah there's quite an age gap between no Lali Lewu but <sighs> no he is not your man he is not a man <laughs> yeah. um no shade um no disrespect maybe disrespectfully i i don't know i don't know but then again i don't know you personally so what the hell can i say but i mm -mm. i feel like me and aiden have something in common when it comes to nola like we are his biggest haters like oh my gosh we can't stand him me and aiden we agree on that one thing we cannot stand nola like no oh my goodness oh my gosh Oh my god, no ways. He was like, why Why are you telling her a joke? We can see you! Oh my god. Oh my gosh, he is a mess. He is a mess. And as messy as he is, he does not take the number one spot. The number one spot goes to Ngadeko and Kanya. The messiest couple on reality. Actually, you know what? I feel like that's being so unfair to Ngadeko because he is not that messy. He is, he's actually quite, he's quite normal, you know, he's quite, mm, he has questionable judgment, <laughs> but he's quite normal, you know, I feel like Kanya deserves her tens. She can carry that super villain title on her own. Like literally, she is the baddest super villain you've ever seen on reality TV, like, Oh my god, I've never seen anything like her. It's been years since I've seen anything like her on TV. And I think it's because people have realized how reality TV can be beneficial, you know? So people come on our screens with certain narratives and storylines that are not necessarily always the truth. You know, people um, have brands and people want to sell um, whatever they want to sell or want to be whatever they want to be so they kind of use that time on reality tv to you know do what they need to do so there's been a lot of fakery <laughs> on reality tv lately and as someone who watched the most recent season of married at first sight oh my god oh my god do you understand they were deleting their private footage you know when production is not around and the couple are having intimate moments or like talks or something like that they would delete that footage if they felt like it made them look a bad way on tv the whole season was just horrible um i cannot believe it i cannot believe it i don't even know why they came on tv if they have all these schemes and plots and plans <laughs> look man it's trash tv and we may be entertained by the most silly content or low vibrational content or whatever you want to call reality tv but at the end of the day we are not fools i am not an idiot okay i am not an idiot i can see when things are not making sense you know and i can see when it's not it's not about an edit it's not about an edit you are a bad person. Like with Kanya, right? I, I was shocked that she didn't even try. She didn't even try to be nice. She was horrible to everybody. <laughs> she was horrible to everybody. Like I knew she didn't give a fuck. And she was like, everyone I met was like, you know, six and seven out of ten. I was like, girl oh my god and when Caesar was crying next to her and you know they kind of like asked her to uh, comfort Caesar, and she was just like please ain't nobody doing that get someone else to do it <laughs> get someone else to do it i was just like damn that's a mean lady <laughs> that's a mean ass lady and she did not stop there she just kept on escalating and escalating and escalating and escalating and one of the most viral moments of the season is when caesar goes to confront kanya you know and kanya just calls her all types of hood rats you know screams shouts at her and uses a word that makes me realize she's an og like she's an og bully i 
have not heard that word since I was probably in primary school, okay? I have not heard that word since I was in primary school. Me. So you can imagine how long she's been bullying people if that word is right at the top of her tongue. I was just like, girl, I know you did not just say Fetty Boom Boom. <laughs> boom boom guys please like if you are over the age of 25 please try to remember the last time you heard someone refer to someone else as fetty boom boom like i don't even know if the young kids know this word i don't even know i don't even know if they know fetty boom boom like this is it's an old school oh my gosh i was like kenya and she said it repeatedly, multiple times on TV. It wasn't a slip of the tongue, like, she meant it. Okay? In case you didn't hear me the first time, I'm going to say it again, and again, and again. She meant it. Man, I hate that. I hate, I hate it for her. I hate it for her because it just came off as hate. Because you can really say a lot of things about my girl scissor, but... <laughs> ugly. <laughs> Fetchy boom boom like she may be thick but girl you don't have to lie <laughs> you don't have to lie I understand that your man is all over SZA you know I understand he's he's all over her you know she's pleasant <laughs> she's what the guys like you know she's pleasant you know she's sweet <laughs> And here you are with your complaining ass all the goddamn time just being horrible and nasty. And you see your guy finally having a little smidgen of peace. And you're like, not on my watch. Not on my watch. I am going to body shame this girl. I am going to disrespect her. I am going to damn near attack her. And I was just like, wow, Kenya. Wow. And she didn't stop there. Episodes later, she went back and forth with Ruth. And I also remember her going back and forth with Isaac about the dishes. And then Isaac went to hang out with Lindile to decompress. And he was busy calling her a gold digger and all that kind of stuff. And she just came in and she was just like, hmm, this meat is dry. <laughs> like, listen, as a reality TV watcher, like... Oh my gosh, I love a good villain. I love a good villain, you know. But I think um, it's safe to say that Kanya took it a little bit too far. It went from funny rude to body shaming to disrespecting to being violent to... I'd even say she physically attacked um, Ngadeko. I... I'd say that. I'd really say that. I'd, I'd really... When I say violent, I mean physical, you know? And it, it at times it was hard to watch because you're just like, wow, how do you not have any redeemable qualities? How are you not even trying on TV? Like, do you not give a fuck? Like, I, I was just like, wow, she really does not give a... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. She was just like, you know, I don't care. I'm going to be the most unlikable person you've seen on TV. And that's just what it is. And that's just what it is. And, you know, um, ever since the ultimatum has came out, some of the cast members have came to social media to clear some things up, to say some apologies. And Kanye did uh, post a little apology, but <laughs> she basically said that she's the type of person who dares to say what other people are thinking. And I was just like, girl, no one was thinking Fetty Boom Boom. Like, let's be honest. No one was thinking Fetty Boom Boom. Don't put that on me now. <laughs> Don't put that on me. You know? I, I wasn't even, even thinking about Ngadaka's cheap shoes. I don't even know he wears cheap shoes. <laughs> you said that. Not me. I wasn't thinking that at all. You can see Raishem. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know if Kanya, um, it's 
the more we talk about it on social media and the more I really think about it, the more I worry for Ngadeko and the more I feel like he could be a victim, you know? And um, as much as we are sick and tired of Ngadeko for not <sighs> leaving Kenya, um, it may be a little bit more complicated for him than we think and I think I think it was not good girl Kanya I don't know if you'll ever see this but it was not good and um, I've seen on social media that you are a mom um, I really hope that that brings some change you know I really hope that that brings some change and I, I pray to God no shade, no shade. I don't mean this respect. I don't mean this disrespectfully. <laughs> not a slip, child. Not a slip of the tongue. <laughs> I don't mean this disrespectfully. <laughs> I don't mean this disrespectfully at all. But I really hope Nkateko is not the father. Not because I wish harm on Kanya or I'm an evil lady or anything like that, but I really think it would be for the best if they could both heal and grow separately. I think sometimes relationships get to a point where they're a little bit too toxic for you guys to heal together. And um, the fact that they couldn't even hide the toxicity on TV just for me makes me feel like maybe it's best that they're not together but you know what we'll find out in the reunion we'll find out in the reunion and yeah man shout out to Kanya for being the super villain of all super villains like everyone is talking about her every time I go on TikTok <laughs> everyone is talking about her their sounds about her like it's crazy it's crazy it's crazy and I feel like she Sometimes, you know, in reality TV, they just call someone a villain just because they don't want to be friends with that girl. You know, and then they say they, that she's a villain, you know, because she just doesn't want to be friends with that girl or something minor. But Kanya definitely deserved it. She earned her title. She earned every time she was on screen. Every single time she was on screen, she gave me something. I mean, like that one scene where she was like, imagine Isaac. <laughs> His girl has been chowed not once, not twice, not thrice. That Isaac, that Isaac must imagine. And I think for me personally, personally, the best part of that whole interaction between Kanya and Isaac was that Kanya genuinely did not give a fuck about what Isaac was going through. And I think that's what I mean when I say he got the experience he deserved because he got home, right? And he was visibly upset, just stomping around right because you know <laughs> and he's he walks past Kanya and Kanya just looks at him he's like what's wrong and I think Kanya knows because the last time Kanya left Ruth and Lebo Ruth was like to Lebo I have something to tell you and obviously obviously I mean one plus one is two unless Kanya is slow and I don't think she's slow she's definitely mean but I don't think she's slow but yeah, one plus one is two, and obviously, what what would need privacy? <laughs> what would I need to tell you about your man that would need us to be just us two? Hello. So I think she kind of got that idea just by the last interaction she had with the girls and Isaac's reaction when she walked in. But she did not give a fuck. Isaac walked to the edge of the room and she was just like, hey, Isaac, what's wrong? And Isaac was like, oh, you're busy laughing and you knew. And she was just like, no, I, I don't know. Hi, Wena. And then Isaac keeps on walking and she doesn't follow. She doesn't follow. She just applies her hand lotion. She just applies her hand lotion like the mean old stereotypical lady in a movie who outlives everyone, outlives everyone. She's just applying her lotion and she laughs. She lost. <laughs> Kanya. Oh, 
girl I really do hope I really do hope that uh, there is a change in her because like I said very scary moments there were very entertaining moments but there were some very scary moments and um, it makes you wonder what happens when the cameras are not around so yeah man I really don't have much to say about Ngatenko um, shout out to you for the promise ring because I feel like everyone is happy you know when a villain loses people are happy you know so as the audience we were kind of happy that Kanya didn't win you know I mean like I don't, I don't hate Kanya I just don't think she should be rewarded for such bad behavior and she had horrible behavior okay so the promise ring the embarrassment the humiliation of the promise ring I hope was her rock bottom and I hope the comments, all the videos going around on social media are more motivation for her not to be the person she was or the person she is. I don't know. Whatever. That was my analysis for the messiest, hardest reality TV we ever see. We ever seen. And it was from South Africa. Guys, South Africa is taking over. South Africa is taking over. Okay? Oh my gosh. What a mess. What a hot ass mess. And you know what? Now that we're done having this conversation and we're done talking about the season, go ahead, refresh yourself, watch the reunion, and then come back a little bit later so we can chat about the reunion. I'm going to be out. I really hope you enjoyed the video and your time with me. Please do make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and like this video, okay? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to be out now. So until the next time, I'm going to see you when I see you. Peace.